Turing patterns. Oops. What's up? I'm Jonathan and welcome to Maker Tales, where I'm sharing my maker journey to help you go further in yours. So don't forget to subscribe and hit that little bell icon to never miss an opportunity to keep making. This video is all about exploring Turing patterns and how to create them yourself. Now I'm going to show you this both using free and paid software so you can get a hold of making your own Turing patterns in any way that you'd like. Now first, a very short history on this. Turing went ahead and discovered a mathematical pattern while he was trying to figure out how organic shapes can be created in nature that have patterns such as these. Now, if you're interested in finding out more, there's a link in the card or down in the description. So let's go ahead and get straight into this. So to create our Turing patterns, we're going to be using two free programs. One of them is called Photopea, which is basically a browser based Photoshop. And the next one is going to be Inkscape, which is a vector editing program. So let's go ahead into Photopea and let's get started by making our project. So we're going to click here on new project. Then we're going to go into screens and I'm going to go for a full HD canvas here. And the first thing to make sure is that you're black, this one and that one there, that's completely black and completely white. From there, we're going to go into filter. We're going to go into render and clouds. You'll see that this will create black and white clouds. Then we're going to go to noise, add noise, make it monochromatic and add the percentage up to 25%. Then from here, we're going to go into window and actions, and then we're going to create a new set of actions and a new action. We're going to hit record. And this time we're going to go into filter, other, high pass. Here, we're going to set the high pass to six pixels and hit OK. Then we're going to go to image adjustments threshold and set this to 127. Lastly, we're going to go filter, blur, Gaussian blur, and set this to three pixels and hit OK. Then we're going to hit the stop recording. And just to show you what we've done, what we can basically do is use this pass right here. If you hit apply a couple of times, you'll see this Turing pattern come to life. So I'm clicking here, here quite a few times and you see how it comes out, but it's a little bit blurry. Well, to sharpen this up, what we do is we go over to image. No, not image. Sorry. We're going to go over to filter. Then we're going to go to sharpen and unsharpen mask. Now we're going to put up some crazy high number here, like 400 and 400 radius and hit OK and you'll see how this sharpens the entire image. Now this is great. However, as you see, we can't edit this. So I'm going to show you how to go ahead and be able to edit this in a way that makes it almost like procedural generation. We're going to create a new layer and turn it into a smart object. From here, we're going to go and do the same thing. Filter, render, clouds. Then we're going to go filter, noise, add noise, make sure that it's 25% and monochromatic and hit OK. Then from here, because it's a smart object, we're going to have a little bit of a weird thing. We're going to hit play and it's going to ask us to apply the threshold again. And Unfortunately, we're going to have to also go ahead and redo this whole Gaussian blur. But what I'm going to do is create a new action here. And I'm going to try and go ahead and put in the Gaussian blur into that action there. But you see, it won't save it because it's a smart object. So this time round, what I'm going to be doing is creating a new layer just so that we can apply and record the Gaussian layer being applied. So I'm going to hit record. I'm going to go over to my filters, blur, Gaussian blur, set this to three, 
hit OK and you'll see that now I have action 0 and action 1. So I'm going to delete this extra layer because I no longer need it. Go back to the smart object. And what I'm going to do now is do the first action 0, which will give me that threshold pop-up. I'm going to put in 127. You can copy it now if you want to be able to copy and paste it in. Hit OK, then go to action 1, hit play, and it'll do the Gaussian blur. And then we're going to do this over and over, doing action 0 and action 1 over and over. And as you see on the right hand side, each time that I do this process, we're getting this large list of effects that are being added to this smart object. Now, the main reason why we're doing this is that these means that these are smart effects, which means you can then change the effects later on to basically create unlimited Turing patterns really easily in a procedural manner. Once I have something that I feel comfortable with, I'm going to go ahead and sharpen this up using our unsharp mask once again, set this to a very high number. So I'm going to go with 400 again and 400. And I'm going to go ahead and hit OK. And now here is the power of why we're using the smart objects. So we have our Turing pattern. Now, the main thing that is really cool of this is we're gonna put in an effect before that first high pass. So I'm gonna go filter, distort. You could use any of these. For now, I'm gonna go ahead and use a twirl. So when I click it, I get this effect. I'm just gonna put it up to some number that I feel will give some sort of nice effect. Ignore the results that we're getting right this minute because this is, looks nothing to what we're going to be getting. I'm going to hit OK and then we're going to go to the twirl and we're just going to drag it down before that first high pass. And as easy as that, we have now affected our Turing pattern with a distortion of our own. Now, Something else that you can do is you can actually click in these smart filters, so to speak, using that little cog on the right hand side of them. And here you can go ahead and change this. So let's add in some more noise and you'll see how that changes the Turing pattern and go really high up or you can go really low down and see the different types of effects that you'll get with this Turing pattern. You can add more distortions, you can add less distortions, you can go to your heart's content and just play around to see something that you feel comes out that you like the look of. Once you have something that you're happy with, let's go ahead and save this. So I'm going to go File, Export as a JPEG. I'm going to save this to the highest quality possible. Hit save and now I'm going to bring this into Inkscape. Just before we turn these Turner patterns into a vector, I need to shout out Nobu Design because they are the ones that inspired me to go ahead and play around with this Turner pattern. The link is down in the description to their channel and also in the card because I completely learned how to do Turner patterns from them. They also have many other patterns that you can go ahead and learn from. So feel free to go over there and test them out. So with our image now just drag and dropped into Inkscape, you can see that it's a decent size. What we're going to do is we're going to head over to Path. We're going to go to Trace Bitmap. And these are the settings that I find work pretty well for me. Feel free to change this as I don't know Inkscape as well as I know Illustrator, but this has given me nice results. We're going to hit OK. It won't take too long for it to process. And then once it's finished processing, just drag out and there you have it. That there is vector. That there is the JPEG. We no longer need the JPEG, so I'm just going to delete it. And now that we have this vector file, let's go ahead I'm going to go into the stroke and fill. I'm going to remove the fill. I'm going to add a stroke to it. 
And there you have it. Using this file here, we can go ahead and use this within laser cutters, within CNC's, whatever we're wanting to create. Here is your Turing pattern to play around with. Now, very quickly, I want to show you that here within Photoshop, it's exactly the same. You can see here are all the effects put onto a smart object. You can see here are our actions and here are our clouds and our ad noise. And as you see, if I just click and play around with all these different distortion settings, you can get an unlimited amount of turn Turner patterns from this. Now, one thing that is good about Photoshop is when you do the actions, you don't have to keep clicking in. It just does it all the way. But of course, Photoshop is paid and I wanted to show you a free way of doing this. You can see here playing around with the noise, you can get all types of different Turner patterns. Now, just very quickly, I'm gonna show you me playing around within Illustrator, me quickly turning this using the live trace and going ahead and just creating these coasters and these puzzles super quickly. Not really gonna do a tutorial, so to speak, but I'm just gonna go ahead and put a time lapse of me playing around with the Turner pattern and showing you my laser cut files that I create at the end. And there you have it. That's how to go ahead and create your own Turing patterns. Now, what you've seen there is a work in progress of a puzzle. Now, there is a lot more I could go ahead and sort out with this. In fact, I am gonna go ahead and create an entire series of small puzzles that the files will be available to download to buy on Etsy for the price of a couple of coffees. On top of that, in case you don't want to go ahead and do the legwork of creating your own Turing pattern, there is going to be a super cheap Turing pattern set on Etsy where you can get 50 Turing patterns that have all been created by me that you can go ahead and create them into whatever you want and they're literally just going to be the price of a coffee. Anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed this. If you do and you think I'm worthy of your support, I would love to see you on Patreon. And speaking of Patreon, thank you so much to my amazing supporters. It's great to have you there, and it's been great to talk with you over on Discord. Speaking of Discord, I have a Discord channel now. The link is down in the description, and you don't have to be in Patreon to join it. So go ahead. I'd love to speak to you there. Thank you for watching. Keep making and let the quest continue. So for those keen-eared of you, I'm sure you've heard me say Turner patterns or Turin patterns or something. Just you make sure you know that these are Turing patterns. I just realized through this edit how many times I've screwed that up. But yes, it's called a Turing pattern.